FNAF World Nuzlocke's are a staple in the FNAF Challenge Run community. The concept is simple. If a character dies, that character is considered permanently dead and you can't use them for the rest of the run. But what if we made it so that if one character died, we had to completely restart? Well, in this video, that's exactly what I will be doing. The rules are simple. I have to beat FNAF World on hard mode and beat the final boss. But if at any point during the run a character dies, which is defined by a tombstone showing up where they were before, I have to completely restart. It doesn't matter if I kill the final boss just before the character dies, if the tombstone shows, we restart. What the fuck? I will be allowing the use of any chips and gift boxes, although again, if the character actually dies, then I can't revive them. Also, I will be allowed to use the Halloween characters, because it is Halloween, and if you have a problem, then you can get fucked. But anyways, with the rules established, let's get into the video. Attempt 1 started off fantastic, dying before I even got to the Halloween section. Oh god. The second attempt, I did manage to get Nightmare on, and with them, I managed to actually play the game. However, once I entered the fifth level, I encountered something that would change how I play. No, 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 no. no. Now, for those who don't know what just happened, there are insta-kill moves that some enemies can have, mainly unscrew and escape key, the latter resulting in the death you just saw. So now, I would need to make sure I take advantage of one mechanic that I previously neglected, chips. I had no idea how powerful chips were, even when I beat FNAF World without any upgrades, but this was a lifesaver, with some chips allowing me to block these moves, which would be essential if I wanted to beat this challenge since otherwise I would have no defense since unlike my character moves, enemy moves always hit. So with this new goal in mind, I set out for another attempt. This attempt only got slightly better, managing to get to Brow Boy before dying, and at this point I knew that I would need to have a support character or maybe another Halloween character. Again, sue me. Something I learnt when it came to running attempts was just how annoying playing the Halloween character minigames were. You have to listen to the same terrible voice lines and play the same mid mini games over and over again. And this was the most annoying part of the entire run. Obviously, it was scary getting into battles and actually playing the game. But at least it wasn't annoying like this. Speaking of runs, the games were going great. I did however have this one super scary fight because I couldn't block jump scares. No. <laughs> oh my god. <clears throat> Anyways, like I said, it was going good with most of my attempts ending at the owl or one of the key bosses. But eventually, we hit the final challenge. After finally getting a kill on the owl, it's time for the final boss, the man himself, Scott Cawthon. Let's go. What the fuck? <laughs> this is a fucking scam. So, Scott pretty much instantly two shots players, and he has the same amount of health as the owl, which took like three minutes to beat. But unlike the owl, Scott attacks twice as fast and has fourth wall, one of the most powerful moves in the whole game, able to completely wipe your team. If you don't have gift boxes, you are screwed. So, is this the end? Did we get all this way just to fail? Well, not exactly. I had one more trick up my sleeve, and let me explain how I actually beat this challenge once and for all. So 
So now we have the winning run, and let me explain how I actually did it, so you can try this for yourself if you want to. Now, with the Halloween section, you can get a bunch of characters, but out of all of them, you want to grab at least Jack O'Bonnie or Purple Guy, and this is for one ability in particular, Slasher. This is your best friend. Slasher works much the same as an ability like Unscrew, which has a 2% chance to instantly kill bosses, although it may be less than actually not too sure. However, Slasher has a 10% chance to work on any enemy, including bosses, with each hit doing 100,000 damage. That's enough to one-shot pretty much every single boss. Well, except the rainbow. But Scott is a one-shot. But anyways, once you've grabbed the characters you need, or any extras you want, you want to make your way to the bird in the second section. Plow through the enemies if you end up having to, and grab Auto Shield, which will help you survive most attacks, more particularly Alarm in the final couple of fights. Then, you want to beat the snowman and clip into the rock next to the cave to grab Block Unscrew. Then you want to go into the cave in the third level, and beat Eyesaw to get auto gift boxes. Know that you can get these chips in any order, but I picked this one specifically, since Eyesaw does have Unscrew, which can kill you before you manage to kill him. Then, progress through the game as normal until you get to the level 5 mine. This is an optional step, but you should get the fine characters chip in this mine before progressing, as having an extra character that's good with an ability like gift boxes or speed song will sure help a ton. Then, you basically want to beat all the other bosses, but make sure you grab Curse Status in the level 6 section and Endless Speed in the level 2 mine at some point before you face off against the Owl. We did this before because, you know, unscrew. When facing the Owl and Scott, you want Curse Status, which gives the enemy every single status effect, Endless Speed, which lets you move super fast, Auto Gift Boxes, so you don't, you know, die instantly, and Auto Shield to protect against Alarm. Then, you just want to spam Slasher against Scott and the Owl, and pray they don't kill one of your teammates first. This is the most dangerous part of the entire run, and it's right here at the end. So, be prepared to die at the end, this will probably take a few attempts. But, without further ado, let's do this. And here we are. Thank you all so much for watching. I have proof of this challenge on the second channel, so if you want to see that, be sure to check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, leave a comment, and join the Discord. I also want to shout out my channel members, Smiley404, Sweet Kerosene, Admiral Blake, and the Infected Ducky. If you become a channel member today, you can get a shout out at the end of one of my videos. Especially at the end of my massive Finds of Freddy's ranking video, where I rank every single character which is coming out on the 11th of November, and it's featuring a ton of YouTubers, including Astral Spiff, The Bones 5, Ambience, I Am Reese, Respawn, to name a few, and there's so, so many more. But with that, thanks again for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.